hey what's up guys welcome back to our youtube channel and welcome to this video this is the part 9 of our laravel for beginners tutorial series in the previous video we have worked with the controller or post controller so we have added the routes so we've tried to open the web.php in our routes folder so as you can see we have defined here route and then the resource and then the name is post and our controller which is post controller and then we also added or generated the post controller class so as you can see here we have here all the functions that we need in order for us to uh, work with our crude or create read update and delete functionality of our project and in this video, we're going to continue working with our post controller and try to fetch data coming from our database and display it on our browser. By the way, guys, if you try to open our post um, model, so as you can see, we haven't done much here. And if you want to change uh, the table name, you can change it here. And also, you can change the primary key. So, so for example, you want to change the table name here. So, for table name and then protected and of course the variable table equals the the new name or the name of your table that you want in your database and of, of course you can also change the primary key because uh, by default we have we are using the id uh, auto increment id so you can also change that in here so protected say for example protected and then the primary key um, primary key equals uh, id there you go or you can change it into public so pr public primary key and then say for example you if you want to name it as uh, item underscore or so for example you want to name it as item underscore id as the primary key so you can do that also but by default we're using the id right and also if you want to change or if you don't want to include the timestamps that we have or that has been added automatically for us so timestamps remember that created at and updated at fields so we can uh, set it to false to not include that in our database so you can do that here but I'm going to show you now how to display the data coming from our database into our page or post page because uh, let's open our project in our browser so this is the home page right and if you try to go to the post section and the page is currently now blank but we can change it because currently it is loading the index function coming from our post controller which is now returning or it doesn't return anything for now so we will change this and we will return the view for our index so we're just gonna edit this so instead of returning empty, it should return uh, a view. So it should be a file under post uh, directory. And then the name should be index.blade.php. So there you go. So we need to create that in our view. So resources and then views. And then we need to create a new folder here. So it should be post and there should be a file here that says um, index.blade.php so there you go and in here let's just extend the layout coming from our layouts folder so layouts and app and of course we need to add the section content for our content to be here especially the post so and section we need to add end of the section here and of course we are going to place um, an h1 to have our post there 
And now let's try to preview our post page. So as you can see, we have the navigation bar and the H1 post. And now let's try to get all the posts coming from our database. So in our post controller, instead of returning just the post index, so we can return the actual post. So we can use the post model because we're using the eloquent. So it is basically just a object relational mapper. And in here, we can just say post uh, double colon and then all. So it will return all the records or all the posts coming from our database. So I'll just um, comment this one out and also this and also this one. So save and then um, review our code. So refresh this page and we have some sort of error here. So class HTTP controllers post not found. So that's because we didn't include or use the app post here. So we're just going to add that. So use app backslash and then post and then uh, semicolon and then save that. And let's go back to our browser and refresh. So there you go. You can see that all the posts coming from our post table in our database has been loaded and it is an array. So let's go back to our post page and try to iterate this array to actually display the title. So instead of returning the, just the post, so we're just going to return the actual variable post. So this will be return view with, and of course the name is post and our actual variable is Post. So it should be S or read S because this variable should contain all the posts coming from our database. So save this and in our index.blade.php, we're going to iterate all the posts coming from our database. So let's just do that. And in here, we'll be adding a condition. So add if and then count. So first, we're going to check if the post array has an element. So post is greater than one. And then we're just going to have an else here. And of course, the end of our if statement. If there's an element inside the post uh, array, so we're going to iterate that by using the for each and then post. And the individual post there. And we're just going to use the bootstrap element for a division. So, and if for now, or end of our for each. And of course, this one is coming from our bootstrap implementation. So, class well. And it should contain the h3. It will hold the title of our post. So post and then the title, of course. And let's try to preview this in our browser. So save this one and refresh. So there you go. We have the post one and post two. So we can add also the created at variable or created at um, attribute in this. So we can see that uh, when it is created and also we can make this title as link. So we can actually click on this and then re redirect it to another page specifying the ID. And then we can see all the details of that particular post. So let's go back to our code. And, and in here, let's add an element. So small. So this will hold the date that the post has been created so small and then it should be written on and then double braces the post variable and of course the created at attribute 
So save this and preview our page in a browser and refresh. So as you can see, we have the post one, post two, and of course the date that when it is created. And let's make this post one or post two as a link. So let's go back to our code editor. And instead of just returning the H3 here, we're going to add a link element. So H or H3 and inside that is the link element. So href and then double code. So we should close this one here. So A for our link. And then of course, it should be uh, redirecting into the post page specifying the post ID so and then ID let's try that save this and let's go back to our browser and refresh so as you can see the post one and post two title has been converted into link and then we can actually click on this and we can see that is uh, blank for now because we haven't um, configured yet this particular page. So in the next video, we're going to discuss and continue working on with this uh, how to view your information coming from the database. So I hope you learned something from this video and see you in the next video. Thanks.